Hey, everybody. I want to just check in with you real quick and give you some instructions about a couple of assignments you have here in the middle part of our class. Hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you're finding your way around the classroom uh, well and easily. So far, the work I'm seeing on my end looks great. You're doing a great job. And as I said at the beginning of the class a couple of weeks ago, we're moving pretty quickly, as you can tell, because of, of it being a summer class. But overall, you're doing a great you're doing a great job. I hope that you're learning already a little bit about some of the different counseling theories and approaches that we use in social services. And I wanted to kind of just give you some instructions here now that we are in modules three and number four, focused on Carl Rogers person centered theory. I wanted to give you a little bit of word of just some instruction and, and description on a couple of things you're going to do. So in this section of the class during this week, you've got two modules, module three and module four to complete as you did last week. Module three, the first module on person-centered theory overviews, a quick little overview of the basic core beliefs of this helping approach in Carl Rogers. And then the second part of the module, module number four, shows and talks a little bit about putting the theory into work, uh, the applications of the, uh, the, uh, of the theory, which is what we're going to do all the way through the course of the semester. First module you'll look at every week is more the core beliefs. The second module is kind of the application. So we come to Carl Rogers and person-centered theory. And this in this module, you have a homework assignment that you'll work on that's due at the end of the week. You have a quiz that you're going to do. It's also due on Monday at the, at the end of, of the start of the next week. But here in the middle, I also, too, want you to do a discussion post. Many of you have been in online classes before where you had a discussion board. And I don't have a discussion board in this class except for this one assignment, the Carl Rogers discussion post. So let me kind of walk you through a little bit about what that assignment is. Number one, there's a YouTube video of Carl Rogers uh, conducting a one session uh, visit with a woman named Gloria that I want you to watch. It's about 40 minutes. You'll see it in this folder. I'm gonna come back and talk about that here in a second. Um, also loaded for you is a, is a PDF file that gives you some instructions of what to watch for and what to listen for. So maybe before you watch the video, why don't you go find that outline and just get kind of familiar with what I want you to listen for and look for. As I say in the outline, I really want you to focus more on Carl Rogers than on Gloria. Gloria is the client. She's important. But what I really want you to do is I want you to observe Carl Rogers, who is the developer of this approach called person-centered theory. That's really the main focus that I want you to focus on. And I give you some instructions and some bullets of some things I want you to be looking for and listening for. And once you've watched the video, I give you some instructions on that outline of going then to the discussion board and posting, creating a new post and posting for me and for the class, your reactions, your response, your observations, what you took from it, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you noticed. Um, you'll see in the outline some instructions on how to do all that. Post that information, save it so we can all see it. You may want to go and look and see what other people have said. That's always fun about the discussion boards. And so that's the assignment. It's due here at the end of the week by no later, just like your homework. It's due at the same date and same time as your homework by midnight, 11.59 p.m. at the end of the day on Sunday, the 26th. So you got two things to do by the end of this module uh, as far as written work, your homework, and this discussion post. And then, of course, there's also your quiz, which is um, which will be available until the end of the day on the 27th. But let me talk to you real quick, quickly about the context. Let me give you some context of this video, this interesting video that you're going to watch on YouTube with Carl Rogers Counseling Glory. You know, we don't have any videos on YouTube of Sigmund Freud, for example, or Alfred Adler or Fritz Perls, or um, Abraham Maslow, some of these large feet, you know, uh, people and pioneers in the field of counseling. We don't have YouTube videos of them doing counseling, but we do have a few YouTube videos of some of the younger pioneers like Carl Rogers actually doing counseling. And what you're going to watch is about a 40 minute video, a very famous video of Carl Rogers doing a counseling session with a woman named Gloria. Here's the background. So uh, Gloria, who you're going to see, the client, uh, worked at Stanford University in Northern California in 1969. You will see very quickly when you watch the YouTube video that it is, we'll, we'll say it's vintage. I won't say it's old. It's vintage. It's, it's old. You'll see very, very quickly. Don't get hung up on that. 1969, Gloria was a divorced mother with a small child named Pam, daughter, and uh, she worked in, at Stanford University. 
And as a part of going through a divorce, she was recently divorced, as you'll hear her talk about in the session. She began to go to counseling through the counseling center there at Stanford. She was an employee. She, she was able to go get free counseling. She was struggling with adjusting to being divorced and being a single mom. And she talks about some of that with Dr. Rogers. And so she was working with another counselor, not Dr. Rogers, but another counselor. And the psychology and counseling department at Stanford came up with a great idea. What if we were to get three of the counseling pioneer masters, so to speak, uh, who were alive at the time, Carl Rogers, Albert Ellis, and Fritz, or Frederick or Fritz Pearls. They were all still alive at the time. Pearls developed Gestalt therapy. Ellis developed cognitive behavior therapy, the, the focus of our next week. And then, and then Carl Rogers, they were all alive. And they approached those th all three of those men and asked them, would you be willing to come uh, with the same client? And um, would you be willing to let us videotape a one hour session of you demonstrating what your particular theory in Carl Rogers' case, person centered theory, what your theory looks and sounds like? All three of them agreed. So they, they, they put the word out in the counseling center and Gloria volunteered. This lady named Gloria volunteered to come in for three individual sessions with Pearls, then Ellis, then Rogers. And she was asked to give them the same presenting problem. They asked her, do not change the presenting problem. What is, what is it you want to talk about with all three? And she decided that she wanted to talk about, as you'll see in the video, her concern about her daughter, Pam. And so she, she gave that presenting problem to all three of these counselors, Ellis, Pearls, and Rogers. And the videos are very well known in the counseling community as very educational and interesting. As you see, different various ways to work with one particular client and the same problem. So what you're going to watch is you're going to watch one of the three sessions. If you're interested in the other two sessions, go to YouTube and type in Gloria and Albert Ellis or type in Gloria and Frederick or Fritz Pearls, P-E-R-L-S. And you'll see the other two sessions. I'm only going to have you watch the one because we're just focused on person-centered theory. And so what you see is you see uh, Gloria's session with Dr. Rogers. I want to just highlight a couple of things. Number one, it's vintage. So don't get hung up on the clothes and on how grainy it looks. Be, be aware of that. Number two, be aware that this is not the, the only way to do counseling. You're going to see one example. It is a sample example of how counseling can look in this case from a person-centered perspective. Is it the right way? No. Is it the only way? No. Is it the best way? Maybe not, probably not, but it is a way. And it's a great way to learn about not only this theory, but just how counseling kind of looks. And so what I want you to do is watch the video, take some notes, go to the discussion board. And what I want you to do is just talk to me and talk out loud about what you noticed, what did you like, where did you see, after you've read through all the lecture notes and looked at the PowerPoint presentation and read in the textbook and, did, and, and, did, and you've done your textbook questions, then you can go into the video and hopefully you'll see permissiveness. Uh, you can go into the video and hopefully you'll see empathy. You, you studied empathy in the module, now you can see it. Um, you, we, we discuss in the learning, the lecture notes, something called non-directive helping. Well, in the video, you can see that at play. You can see it in action. Um, you'll see in uh, your textbook reading, I ask you a question about actualizing man's actualizing tendency or self-actualization. That's one of the textbook questions in your homework. So you can answer that question for your homework. Then you can go and watch the video and you'll see. You'll see how Rogers has that mentality. He has the mentality that he believes in and trusts the client. He doesn't assume the client can't figure it out. That's one of the key ideas of person-centered theory. It believes in man's actualizing tendency. Our ability as people, as flawed as we are, to figure stuff out. That we have the ability to figure stuff out. And that as helpers, our job is not to do that for clients. It's to help them figure things out for themselves. To come alongside them, to be empathetic, to be respectful, to be real and genuine, to be non-judgmental, to, to create an atmosphere where a person feels they can be themselves and, 
and that they're not going to be judged or preached at or condemned. And that, and that if we do that, one of the core ideas, as we, as you saw in your, in your, your, your video this week for your lecture video, that Rogers believe that if we can create that trusting, accepting, empathetic environment, clients will naturally work. They will naturally start figuring things out. You'll see that in the video. You'll see. I hope you'll see that as you'll see how Rogers tries to just be present with her, tries to be immediate, as we would say, with her, tries to be accepting with her. And once she kind of gets over her awkwardness, takes three or four or five or six minutes or so, when she gets comfortable with Dr. Rogers, she just starts talking. You'll see it. She just starts talking. And the more she talks, the deeper she talks. And her problem starts, at, as we would say in counseling, her problem starts up here. And it just revolves down and revolves down. And he doesn't have to tell her what to talk about. She naturally talks about what she needs to talk about. And that's the idea behind personal center theory. It's one of the ideas that clients know what to talk about. And it's not our job to tell them what to talk about. It's to support them while they talk about what they need to talk about. And the more we do that, they will talk about what they need to talk about. And they'll begin to figure stuff out for themselves instead of the, instead of the counselor helper having to be the advice giver or the fixer or whatever. So anyway, all of that is an overview introduction into this little discussion post. Look at the lecture notes, look at the PowerPoint, watch the lecture videos, do your homework, read the textbook, watch the video of Carl Rogers, doing the counseling, get the assignment outline, post three or four or five or six really good observations for us to kind of look at. Don't be afraid. Uh, sometimes in the discussion post, there may be similar observations and experience. That's totally fine because my hope, my hunch is many of us, many of you will see similar things. Don't worry about that. If, if, you're, if, if, you, if what you're saying is similar to what someone else has said, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just give me your and give us your observation, your experience, what you like, what you didn't like, let us for so all of us can take a look at it and learn that way. And then we'll move on next week into Albert Ellis and cognitive behavior theory. So have a great week this week. Enjoy the video with Carl Rogers. Don't forget it's vintage. It's vintage. 1969. Don't worry about it. I know it's old. That's one of the first things students often say when they watch the video was, man, that thing was kind of old. It is old. Well, it's vintage. Excuse me. It's vintage. Okay. So take a look at it. Hope you learn a little bit. See you next time.